Maybe this time it's a welcome to Michael and Mark. Our two crazy girls there, I guess. Thanks for the warm intro, Tracy. Good job. Well, first of all, on behalf of the National Weather Service, I'd like to officially welcome you to Hurricane Dallas. evacuation exits in the front and the rear of the facility. <laughs> You're probably wondering why there are two of us tonight, and uh, before we go any further, I do want to dispel any rumors. This is not Fantasy Island. <laughs> I am not Mr. Roy, and he is not Cassim. Unfortunately for us, Dave's huge ego calls for him to be toasted by a great speaker on the day of his wedding. Unfortunately, Dave doesn't know any great speakers, so he must have two barely competent ones instead. As you all know, Dave and Lori met and dated briefly in 1995. Lori was a young girl about to finish up her college career and start her business career. Dave was a young man who enjoyed drinking large quantities of beer, <laughs> playing ungodly amounts of golf, and dodging all responsibilities. Thank you. On their first date before they went to Fenway, Dave politely and only half jokingly sat Lori down and told him, he was in the market for a sugar mom. <laughs> Surprisingly, the uh, romance fizzled shortly. But eight years later, in 2003, they reunited again. Lori was a successful working woman who enjoyed buying wines and traveling. <laughs> Dave was now slightly older, <laughs> but he still enjoyed drinking large quantities of beer, playing ungodly amounts of ball, and dodging as much as possible. <laughs> so I'd say the only thing that's changed significantly was Dave's hairline. <laughs> Sugar Mama still burning deeply inside Dave's bed. Imagine the joy when Lori came and picked them up for their first date. Dave walked out of his apartment and Lori was driving a brand new Mercedes SUV. Later that night, as Lori was paying the dinner tab, Dave called me on his cell phone and he whispered very excitedly, I found my soulmate. Glory. Oh, oh my God. One of many endearing qualities is your affection for animals. <laughs> Especially dogs. It really came as no surprise to Mike and I why you fell in love with Dave Cavanaugh. <laughs> For years, years, we've all said that Dave has had canine qualities. <laughs> For instance, Dave prefers to stay within one mile of his porch at all times. Dave entails peacefully drifting in and out of sleep on his couch, seemingly with no concern at all for the outside world. And that's just nine to five Monday through Friday. Lori, <laughs> we assure marriage with Dave is going to be a very entertaining experience. You're going to be surprised and amazed at the same time. You're going to be surprised and you'll never remember when you have dinner reservation. <laughs> 
But you gotta be amazed when he's able to tell you what Giselle and Tom Brady have for breakfast. <laughs> surprised over the lavish birthday and Christmas gifts they give you. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're going to be more surprised that these gifts directly benefit Dave much more than that. <laughs> but I'm guessing you already know that as your last two gifts were a Myrtle Beach vacation <laughs> and a frame lithograph of Bill Belichick. <laughs> While he enjoys traditionally manly pursuits such as watching football and chewing large amounts of tobacco, Dave is actually a high maintenance sensitive individual. Dave prefers top 40 love songs over more masculine rock and roll. His iPod contains only Beyonce, Fergie, and here's some pots where to sit. In the summer, he places lemon juice on the top of his head in the hopes that his red hair will turn blonde. He figures nine months of being mistaken for Ralph Melf and Danny Bonaduce is better than 12 months. And lastly, Dave fights off the common cold like it's a flesh-eating disease. He lies in bed for days, he sedates himself with Sudafed, and he prays that God will take him peacefully in his sleep. But fear not, Lori. Dave certainly has his positives. He'll be a wonderful provider for your family. For years, Dave has been telling us that he's a tenacious salesman. And I've actually had the opportunity to talk to some of Dave's colleagues who tell me that Dave works almost every day. Almost on Monday, almost on Tuesday, and almost on Wednesday. <laughs> Dave, I would like to thank you for being a great friend. It's been easy, really. All that you've ever asked of me is that I have enough gas in my car to drive you around. And money in my wallet to pay for your beer tap. And I stay sober long enough that I get you home in a reasonable life. Thankfully, friends like you don't come along with me. Well, this is sincere enough, though. I'd like to express my heartfelt congratulations to you all. Thank you. And I'll thank you for choosing us to say a few kind words. Oh, boy. I've known Dave for about half my life, and I think of him as a brother. An odd, slightly simple brother. I've been known as redhead, but a brother nonetheless. Dave, we've had some laughs at your expense tonight. All of it was richly deserved. <laughs> but it's fitting that we've had a few laughs. I speak for Mark, and I'm sure most of your friends here tonight, when I say that the greatest and funnest times of our lives have been sent in your company. I'm sure the best is yet to come. Lori, what you did in that church proved that you're a brave woman. <laughs> you are truly a perfect fit for Dave. I've actually been lucky enough to know Lori for about 15 years. She's truly a kind, sensitive, and caring person. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Dave and Lori actually share these amazing qualities, and it's just one of the reasons why they're, they're, they're a great couple. And, uh, I feel fortunate to call you both friends, and I, I look forward to many years of friendship. So with that, I would ask you all to stand and have a toast. We would like to wish the new Mr. and Mrs. Cavanaugh the very best of luck and true happiness in their life together. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. <laughs>